Hi guys, John here from Sphere Fitness. I just want to give you a, a rundown of your report and how to interpret it. Now, just to just to take set your mind easy, so more detailed information if you go in and use this Q code down here in this section here. Um, that will give you some information as to what each of them means, but I'll try my best to explain as well. Um, so basically in this, in this lilac area, we have the body weight, which is a typical scale weight, and uh, obviously that can fluctuate all over the place depending on so many factors. But the machine will also take into account your body fat percentage of what your scale weight is made up of. So we've got a fat, fat mass here of 11.1 kilograms based off a percentage of 15.4. We've also got the desirable range here. So um, that's a, you know, that's dead bang in the middle. So excellent. We've got a fat free mass here then of 61 kilograms out of that 72. Uh, we also measure muscle mass levels. And again, we've got a desirable range one that's kind of high as possible to, or at least maintain it, particularly if you're dieting, you want to be maintained. That's the importance of protein. It maintains muscle mass if you're dieting, but also ensures that we hold on to what we have. It's very important that we hold on to muscle mass as we age because it's one of the predetermines of aging. We have bone mass here. Again, not to be confused with bone density. Bone density is a more accurate reflection of your bone health. And it's recommended if you do want to get that more uh, crystal clear version uh, uh, view of that, it's recommended that you go and get a DEXA scan. The BMI is uh, is, is a more uh, familiar uh, reading. Uh, it's the height to weight ratio. And again, we've got a BMI score here, but we've also got a desirable range, which we want to see. In. So all of these sit perfectly in the middle, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. This metabolic age is all the information taken uh, uh, from, from, the, from the previous readings, and it correlates it, uh, the system correlates it with people in a particular age demographic and gender demographic and pumps out an age. So uh, if you are under, great. If you're over, well, look, it's something to aim for. It's not, you know, it, it all that accurate because there's obviously other factors of health which are equally as important. Mental health, for example, uh, it, it, you know, it's not it's not uh, the be all and end all. It's just something which is uh, can be quite encouraging in that respect. So as we move over, we've got the physique rating as well. Again, bang in the middle here, you see the big uh, black circle. If you're out on the kind of extremes, and that's what we're working to get people into the middle. We want it to be balanced. That's what we want. We want things balanced. So then we have, uh, moving down, we've got the fluid levels within the body. And you can see here, 60% of your total body water, which is amazing statistic, really. And it could just goes to show how much your body weight can fluctuate as a result of this, if you look at the big picture here. So, uh, you know, people hop on the scales first thing more than they just draw because it's up a couple of pounds. Well, guys, it's typically water. Here we have a look at the extracellular water. That's the fluid levels outside the cell and intracellular water, which is the fluid levels within the cell. So this person's quite nicely hydrated. We want to, we look at the ratio here between the two. And again, we want it kind of in the middle there. That's, that's absolutely dead on. The basal metabolic rate is taking all this information is the amount of calories needed to kind of function at the predetermined activity levels of the subject. And also the, uh, the, the you know, just, just, just to function basically. Again, we want this in the green. So, uh, uh, which is great. Now, visceral fat level, I, I think this is really, really important because this is the fat that you don't see. This is the kind of the lurking fat. This is the fat that's around your organs. You can pinch a layer of fat which lays under your skin. That's called your subcutaneous fat. And then you have the visceral fat which sits around your organs. Now, you need some because fat actually produces lots of hormones. It keeps your organs very healthy, uh, keeps them well insulated. We know when things are warm, they tend to function better. So that's why uh, we want to keep that pretty low. Not, you know, so low it's not registering a number, but low that it doesn't come and drift up into the red zone. Then we look at the segmental analysis. So this is uh, how much, uh, you know, uh, looking left to right, comparing left to right arm, left to right leg. And in this case, it's, it's absolutely dead on. So we've got very little difference between the left and right side. And equally with the fat distribution is, is absolutely spot on there. Now, where this might be relevant is someone's had an injury, a, a surgery, and they've, uh, you know, injured their, say, for instance, had a cruciate injury and injured their right leg. Uh, you know, we look, we measure before the rehabilitation process and then we measure at the end and hopefully the discrepancy has been corrected. As we come down, this is a little bit more for the researchers. So as you stand on the scale, you'll get a kind of a left and right balance again. Because this is so balanced between the muscle mass distribution pattern and the fat distribution, it's going to sit somewhere in the middle, which is fantastic. Leg muscle score and BI information are not really anything to concern yourself with. They're more for the researchers. So, guys, I hope that's uh, shed some light on what those mean. I would strongly recommend you refer to the website here for additional information and how you how they come about with these uh, statistics. And you can uh, you can take it from there.